Well, stand up on your feet. God is good. Are you ready to worship this morning? We got a new one to teach you. Excuse me for a minute, but I've got a song to sing. And it might not be on key, but it's from my heart. And no one else can tell it what the Lord has done for me. And this might take all day, so I better stop right now. And it might get loud. It might get loud. Think of where I could have been, should have been, would have been if you haven't stepped in. Oh, I got a praise inside that can be denied, so I gotta get it out right now. It might get loud. It might. Why can't I praise Him as loud as I want? Why 
Is it working? Yeah. Good morning, Crossroads. I'm Casey Bruce. I'm a leader here. This is my wife, Keisha. We uh, are so happy you guys are here to worship with us this morning. This morning, if you are new, welcome to our family. We want you to feel welcome. If you need anything, come find me or, or Keisha or any of the leaders here at Crossroads. We'll be back here in the Welcome Center afterwards to answer any of your questions. Pastor Mark has a great word for today. You guys are in for a treat. Welcome to Crossroads.
there's nothing, nothing that our God can't do. What a fitting song for this next part of our service. If you have a need in this place, the elders of our church, the spiritual leaders of our church are going to come forward. They're going to stand around this altar area up the aisles and in the back. If you have a need, there's nothing. We just proclaim there's nothing that our God can't do. So as you agree with them in prayer, as we stand in unity with you to agree with you in prayer this morning, your needs are going to be met. So if you have a need in this place anywhere, anywhere in this place this morning, they're going to be right here with you as we continue to worship. God is good. God is good. I'm found in 
sing it to him. song but sometimes we forget that in our worship of our Savior his desire is to move closer that's what he wants right he wants to move closer can you just lift your hands all over this place just take a minute nobody's singing anything nobody's doing anything talk to your Savior and say Lord I just want to be in your presence praises of your people as we worship you in this house. God, we came here today for you. We came here today for you. Lord, be, be blessed and be glorified in our praise and meet with us here today. We worship you, we praise you, and we prepare our hearts, God, for you to change us before we leave here today. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Thank you for worshiping today. You can be seated. is a great time for you to check your information in our church database to make sure it's up to date and see what your membership status is. Before and after service each week, we'll have someone in the Southeast lobby that you can go to and check your information to see what we have for you. You can also email us at info at crossroads.church. Hey, Crossroads family, it's that time of year again for baby dedications and baptism. That's right, you heard me correctly. On November 20th, during service, we will be having baby dedications and baptisms. If you are interested, please go to crossroads.church slash events to get registered. Hey, our fall festival is coming up at the end of this month, Sunday, October 30th from 5 to 7 p.m. We have games, we have inflatables, we have candy, we've got costumes, we've got so much incredible things for your whole family. Come join us at Crossroads Church, 5 to 7 p.m., October 30th. Are you curious about what's going on at Crossroads Church? Make sure to download our Church Center app. You can find information about online giving, upcoming events, and our classes. Hey, Crossroads family, guess what? We are growing. In fact, we're opening up our new nursery expansion in just a few weeks on November 6th. If you want to check it out, you can pop up anytime before then to see what it looks like. Hey family, are you new to Crossroads? Then this is for you. My church event is for new guests looking to dive a little bit deeper into who we are and what we're about. My church happens after service. You're gonna check crossroads.church for the dates and times, but we hope to see you there. If you're new to Crossroads Church today and would like to learn more, make sure to fill out a Connect card. You can turn it into the offering or bring it to guest reception. It is located in the Welcome Center and we would love to meet with you. And we have a free gift for you. Good morning.
saying good morning. How are you? Absolutely wonderful. The board is joining me up here on the platform because today is a great day at Crossroads. It is Pastor Appreciation Day. A day full of honor and love and care. How wonderful, how wonderful. Yes, 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 yes. Amen. We uh, love our pastors. We love our staff pastors. And there's already been some things, I think, done for them as well. But it's our joy and our privilege today to call Pastor Mark and Pastor Talina right here. Give it up all over the house right now. Yeah, right here. No. Just a minute, just a minute. All right, number one, we've got, uh, look at that, man, look at that. Wow, 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 wow. What love. Yes. Bless the Lord. So good. Amen. All right, first of all, we've got... Uh, some cards to give you open up quick so that I can read them because I want to read them to everybody so yeah open them right on up yes yes whoever quickest let me just read it out loud absolutely yeah 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 all right Pastor Tolina here we go we were delighted to share with you not only the gospel of God but we shared our lives as well first Thessalonians 2 and 3 sharing your lives with the church is not always simple surely not easy and yet you do it all with love and grace with faith authenticity we're blessed by you and we pray that you're always blessed by God as well with our great love and appreciation your church family amen God bless you pastor the Lord's called you and the Lord has gifted you to bless you and to make you a blessing as you rest in him he will work and as you trust in his ways, he will accomplish his purposes for this house. May you sense his pleasure in your faithful serving. And may you know that you are very much appreciated for all that you do. And God is able to provide you with every blessing in abundance. So that by always having enough of everything, you may share abundantly in every good work. 2 Corinthians 9 and 8. With our great love and appreciation, your church family. Those are words from our heart to yours. Amen. And we have a blessing. Yeah, there, there, there. So this is money. A check, actually, but uh, close enough. <laughs> and uh, once again, it's a blessing from our heart to yours as well. And last but certainly not least is beauty from God's world, from our hearts to you, just a, a token of our love and appreciation and our honor and respect. We love it. We love everything you're doing in the house. We love the hand of God upon you. We love the anointing that flows in this house. We love the outpouring of the Spirit and the making room for the Holy Ghost. Oh, He's the great... Uh, power of God at, at work in here. So once again, as uh, we get ready to let him go and we'll be seated and get ready for offering, Adam, please rescue the moment, all right? Give it up one more time. Amen. Well, I guess I have to follow that up. <laughs> if you don't know me, my name is Adam. I'm the youth pastor here at this wonderful, amazing church. And if you would allow me, I just want to tell you a little bit about us here at Crossroads. Man, we stand upon four things here uh, as a church, our four pillars. And the first and foremost of those is salvation. We love to see people coming to Jesus Christ. Come on. The second of those pillars is missions, and that's how we get people to come to the name of Jesus Christ. We love diversity. We want to see the inside of this church look like heaven's going to look, and that's every race, color, creed, everything. All of it, we want to see them in here. 
And lastly, oh, we love creativity here at Crossroads Church. Isn't it amazing that you never kind of know what, what you may see here on a Sunday morning? You may come in one month and there's a set that's being built. You may come in one Sunday and there's a choir. Can we give it up for the choir? They were amazing, aren't they? Oh, I love our church. It's so good to be here this morning. We're going to get ready right now for tithes and offerings, and I'm going to invite the ushers to come forward. And if you would, bow your heads with me this morning and let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to gather here in your house this morning and lift up the name of Jesus. Father, I pray for your Holy Spirit to move among us this morning, to strengthen us, to encourage us, to comfort us, to unite us in your love so that we can do mighty things, not for us, but for you. Not for Pastor Adam, but for your kingdom. Lord, I pray that you would multiply this offering that's given this morning, Father, to work miracles. Do things that only you can do for your kingdom. May your purposes be done for every penny that is given this morning, Father. And may you open up the windows of heaven to pour out blessings on every person that gives this morning, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Man, thank you is just, just the, the word that, that is on my heart right now. Thank you, Jesus. It is in your mighty name that we always pray and everybody said, amen.
Well, good morning. Isn't God good? Hey, real, real quick, one more time. Let's just give it up one more time for our choir and our worship band. Yes. Great job. Great, great, great job they did. And uh, so excited, so excited to worship with you here today. Um, if you don't know who I am or uh, been, fell asleep during the previous portion of the service, my name is Pastor Mark. I am the lead pastor here at Crossroads Church. We're so glad that you are here with us today, whether you are in person or you are watching online. Uh, thank you so much for, uh, for being here with us. Let's do something real quick. Let's bring the lights up just a little bit in the house, just a little bit, just for the next couple of seconds. This is what we're going to do. Um, when I say go, I want just everybody just to find somebody and wave at them. Just give them a wave, you know. So ready? One, two, three, go. If you're watching it online, click hello, click wave a hand button, just click something, let us know you're here. All right, <laughs> we are so glad you are here. God, God is doing something great in our church. People are uh, coming to know him. They're, come, they're crossing that line of faith and, and lives are being changed. We're excited. We're excited about what God is, is doing um, in our midst. I want to remind you tonight is our fall festival. And uh, we're going to be opening up our doors to the community, uh, something we've done for many, many years as a church. It's a, a huge event. Uh, we're going to be doing indoor trick-or-treating. Uh, it's going to be great. Our CC Brass, I believe, is going to be here tonight playing with us as well. If you've not heard them, then man, you need to be here. They are worth the price of admission right there. But um, um, we've got that coming up. Baptisms. Family celebration service happening November the 20th, November the 20th. Be here for that. If you're interested in being baptized, uh, you can email us at info at crossroads.church or you can sign up through our website. Um, lives are being changed constantly. We want your story. We want you to be a part of what God is doing through Crossroads Church. And then I want to remind everybody, um, starting next week, through the month of November, we're going to be taking up special offerings and, and giving special emphasis in the service to our heart for Mozambique. Mozambique is the nation in Africa that we have adopted, and we are, we're excited. Things are happening there. We're sending a team this spring to go build tabernacles. We've already been, we've been building churches in the city of Tet. We're going to start building tabernacles in the capital city of Maputo. You guys met uh, missionaries that we support, so we are involved in changing the nation of Mozambique. And it takes resources, it takes giving, it takes sacrifice. And uh, so the month of November, we are going to talk about our heart for Mozambique. And one last thing, um, I just want to encourage everybody to exercise your, your privilege and freedom to be a part of our uh, system of government and be active and vote and get out there and vote and... Um, the key is to participate. Pray and participate. That's what we ask everybody. Pray and participate. And um, so we, we love our nation. We love the state of Oklahoma. And uh, we want you to be prayerful and uh, to participate. So if you would turn to the book of Ephesians, we are in the third week of a series entitled Love Letters. This is going to be a reoccurring series. We're going to do three, four weeks now, and then we'll come back to it and revisit it at a later date. Love Letters is all about uh, the, the letters that Paul has written to New Ch Testament churches. They are letters of love. They are letters of instruction. And we are so thankful that they are not just written to a New Testament audience. They are written to us. And they give instructions not just to people in a New Testament setting, but they give instructions to us. They help us to understand how to live out this life of Faith. Week one, we talked about being made alive. I was dead. I've been made alive to echo life. Well, last week we talked about the speed of unity and the importance of alignment and unity within our lives. Well, unity is, is critical. Unity brings exponential impact and output. We talked about this last week. So how can we operate and how can we live in unity in our lives? 
How can we turn unity from an abstract idea that sounds great on a Sunday morning to a reality on Tuesday afternoon? Now let's get real. You and I know that churches in America, we need unity. Our nation needs unity. See, we could talk all day long on an organizational sense. Some of you, you work for a company, an organization, and you're like, wow, they really need some unity. Because nobody knows what anybody else is doing and everything just gets messed up and it's just crazy. We need unity and we could talk all day long in a corporate, cultural, and organizational sense. But let's be honest, some of your lives are lacking unity. They're lacking alignment, and so, like we talked about last week, when a tire on your car gets out of alignment, things start to wobble. And eventually, that wobble, that knock, if it's ignored for a long enough period of time, will cause damage. Some of us in this room this morning, some of you watching online, you are driving through life just dealing with the wobble because something in your life has gotten out of alignment and you're just going down the road. And what we need to do sometimes is stop and pull over and assess what is out of alignment. What is out of unity? Some of your, your home life is is dysfunctional, and, and you're dealing with stress, uh, undue stress at home. Why? Because something in your marriage, something in your relationship with your kids, something is out of alignment. And we have to do the hard work of stopping, pulling over, and ensuring that our lives are in alignment. This morning, I want to talk to you about the road to unity. The road to unity. Everybody say road. Road. The road to unity. We're going to talk about how we get there, how we turn the ab- this abstract idea of unity. Oh, it's great to, you know, oh, yes, we, we all want to be in unity. Yes, I'd like to buy the world a Coke, right? I'd like to teach the world to sing in perfect harmony. It'd be great, wonderful. But how do we do it? How do we live this out 3 p.m. on a Tuesday? You know, when we're in the grind of life, how do we ensure that we are in unity and we are in alignment? Because unity doesn't just happen. It doesn't just happen. Alignment doesn't just happen. We aren't passive participants in unity. We aren't passive participants in alignment. Unity is hard work. Alignment is hard work and requires our active and attentive involvement. So I have a few steps that I want to give you to help you understand how can we live in alignment and unity. So Ephesians chapter 3 verses uh, 16 and 19 says that according to the riches of his glory, he may grant you to be strengthened with power through his spirit in your inner being. Let Let me stop right there. Let me stop right there. Let me hop off my notes for a second. Alignment and unity requires the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Let's just get that. Let's get that out of the way right now. It requires the supernatural and divine work of the Holy Spirit in operation in your life. Because if you and I are just focused on how can I do this, how can I do this, if you are the master of alignment in your own life, you're still going to operate with a wobble. You're just going to operate with a more efficient wobble. Is everybody getting what I'm saying? The Holy Spirit lives within us, but he does not stem and he does not come from us. He's the Spirit of God. He exists outside of us, but chooses to live and dwell within us. So he can bring an outside perspective You know, as I get older, I find myself having to be more intentional about my appearance and how I look. You know, when you're, uh, come on, guys, remember, when you're, when you're 15, you know, 
You're, you're trying to impress all the girls, and you're just, you stand in front of the mirror, making sure I'm letting my look, look good. Yeah, you know, right? Anybody have teenagers that they, this is what they do all day long? They just stand, making sure they're okay? Stop, you just saw yourself for the last two minutes. Get out of the room, let's go. But as I get older, I mean, I just, I just glance just to make sure there's nothing horrible happening. There's nothing oozing coming out of my ear. We're good, okay. Right? Because if I stare too long, I feel like I'm, you know, watching a, like a baseball game and I'm mad at the umps. I'm like, come on, you're blind if you're going out like that, you know? <laughs> right? I'm, if something, nothing's on fire, okay, we're good. You got to be intentional because nearness to erodes awareness of. And so often in our own lives, if I'm the one who's driving my own alignment and unity, nearness to erodes awareness of. So I overlook my own shortcomings, but the Holy Spirit does not. You and I need the Holy Spirit to give an outside perspective. Oh, you know what? Maybe the way I said that wasn't as nice as I thought it was. Hmm. Well, my intentions were good, yeah, but that's not what I communicated. The Holy Spirit is the one that points to us and that taps us on the shoulder and says, hey, mm -mm. we cannot get into true unity and alignment. And let's... let's Unpack this for a quick second. The Word of God tells us the Holy Spirit leads us into all truth. He leads us into the truth of His Word. I, I'll be honest, guys. I can't be trusted to lead myself accurately into the Word of God, the truth of God's Word. Why? Because I'm a fallen person. I bring my own stuff into it. But the Holy Spirit says, no, 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 that's not what that verse says. No, no, no. This is the truth of the Word. Oh, that means I've got to die to myself? Oh, that's different. I have to pick up my cross and carry it? Oh, yeah. I just expected them to pick up their cross. And maybe even somebody pick up my cross because I don't want to do it. Why? Because it's inconvenient. But the Holy Spirit is the one who taps us on the shoulder and shines the magnifying glass on our lives and says, this is how you get into alignment. Is anybody with me today? Verse 17, so that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith, that you being rooted and grounded in love may have strength to comprehend with all the saints what is the breadth, the length, the height, and the depth, and to know the love of Christ that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Mm -mm -mm. That you may be filled with all the fullness of God. God wants you to have a full life. He wants you to have a full and abundant life, and that comes through the outpouring and outflowing of the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. It requires the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. I, I don't want to hop off of this topic too quickly, because I feel that this is for somebody in here today. The work in the importance of the work of the Holy Spirit in your life. Because we're not, we're not just talking about a self-help. This is not a self-help talk. This is not a TED talk. This is the life-changing, life-altering, life-filling work of the Holy Spirit in our life. We've got to, when we wake up in the morning, say, oh, Holy Spirit, I want to be full of your presence. I want to be full of you today. Fill me up. I can't do this on my own. Listen, somebody needs to hear this. Stop trying to do it on your own. Stop trying to do it on your own. You've got a helper. You've got a friend. You've got somebody who wants to shoulder the burden. Stop it. The Holy Spirit wants to work in your life. In fact, let's take a quick moment. Everybody, if you would bow your heads with me, let's pray. Heavenly Father, I pray right now that your Holy Spirit would fill us to overflowing right now. Those who don't sense your presence would feel your presence. Even those in the room who have never felt your presence before and are unfamiliar with what it feels like to be full of your spirit would begin to feel full. That fullness, that joy, that passion, that anointing and the fruit that comes with your presence. Fill us, fill us, fill us. We thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.
Amen. So let, let me jump to the first tip to unpacking alignment and unity in our lives. Are y'all ready? Okay. Number one, alignment requires priorities. Alignment, unity requires priorities. See, there are a few axioms that we love to quote, famous sayings and phrases that we love to quote, and one of them is, if you don't know where you're going, any road will lead you there. Right? Anybody heard that one? If you don't stand for something, you'll fall for anything. We say these, and we've said them so much, it loses some of the power that comes along with this statement, but they both speak to the need of a compass in our lives. Your life needs a compass. Your life needs priorities. Every great leader or anybody who has ever accomplished anything great in life, they all have something in common. Their lives were defined almost to the point of obsession by the pursuit of something. It's an external goal or passion or something that anchored the trajectory of their lives. What is anchoring the trajectory of your life? What is the goal of your life? What are your passions? What are your pursuits? Where is your life headed? Where is it going? You and I have a certain amount of years and days that we are allotted on this earth. We might as well make them count for something. Where's your life headed this morning? Where where are you going? Those priorities will help us to frame out the pathway of our lives. Because if you do not set your priorities, your priorities will set you. If you do not set your priorities, your priorities will set you. You see, everybody, everybody in this room, you have a set of priorities. And if you're not actively involved in setting those priorities, somebody else is. Somebody else is. I've been talking with some of our elders over the last couple of days and, and talking about theology. Now, that's a, that's a big term, and, and I know a lot of us, we hear the word theology, and, and our eyes roll in the back of our head, and we go, oh, oh that's, a big, that's a big word, and brain oozes out our ears, and we're like, no, I'm, I'm done, I'm checked out, because it just sounds like some big academic word. Theology is simply what your belief about God is. That's your theology, and here's the thing, everybody has a theology. Did you know this? Everybody has a belief about God. Even the, the most staunch atheist has a belief about God. And their belief is that there is no God. That's a theology. Here's the thing we need to understand. If you and I are not actively forming what our theology is, somebody else is. Somebody else is. If you and I aren't actively looking into the Word of God to form what we believe about God, somebody else is. Who? I don't know. TV? Movies? Experiences? I'm sorry, I don't know about you, but I mean, I, you know, movies are great, but I don't want Hollywood forming my theology. That's not their job. Right? Their job is to entertain. Somebody needs to go over to Hollywood and tell them that. Remind them ever so gently, you know what? Your job is just to entertain. It's not social engineering. It's not political propaganda. It's not forming my theology. Right? Get me Larry Moe and Curly on the the screen and let somebody slip on a banana peel and we'll be okay. (laughs) You and I need to, we need to take ownership over the formation of what we believe students. You need to take active involvement in in what, forming what you believe about God. Because if you don't, somebody else will. Parents, you need to take an active part in helping to form your children's theology. Because if you don't, somebody else will. The Word of God does not say to raise up a child in the way that he would go. It says train up a child. Train up a child. You raise corn, you train a soldier. 
You raise corn, you train a soldier. You, you, you train a child. But we need to be setting our priorities because your priorities, they set your path. Priorities determine where you're going and check this out. Your priorities determine how you get there. They determine where you're going and how you get there. I mean, look at, you know, a couple different uh, popular, um, successful coaches. And it's one thing for them, you know, every coach wants to win. But how you get there determines. I mean, this, what are your reactions to, let's say, Tony Dungy? A winning NFL coach. Yeah. What about Bill Belichick? You know, some of you, you know, right? What's the difference? They're both winning NFL coaches. The difference is how they got there, right? Is it too soon? What about Lincoln Riley? (laughs) It tastes bitter in the mouth, doesn't it? Why? Why? He was a winning coach for us at OU. He won a lot of ball games, took us to the playoffs. Ah, it's not just where you're going, it's how you get there. And you and I have to be active to set our priorities. What are your priorities in your home? What are your priorities in business? What are your priorities in your thought life? What are the things? What are your non negotiables? What are your non negotiables? And let me encourage you today. Let me get you started on the right path. Your non-negotiables need to stem and flow from the Word of God. They need to flow from the Word of God. I must get my priorities in alignment with the Word of God. Your priorities will set your path, and we need to let your priorities set our passions. You see, we think that the things that we're excited about are the things that will become important to us. But really, it's the things that we make important. Those are the things that we become excited about. Let me give you an example. Well, the Word of God says, where your treasure lies, there your heart will be also. Your heart follows your treasure. Your heart follows the things that you place a great importance on. We often read it and misinterpret it, and we think it says, where your heart lies, your treasure will be also, meaning treasure will follow your passions. No, your passions follow the things that you deem as important. See, this is where, this is where so many marriages, let me, let me talk, let me get real. This is where so many marriages struggle. We let our passions and our feelings lead the way. We start dating and everything's great. She looked good. Everything she does, she looked good. I'm just passionate. Ooh, can't wait to be around her. Can't wait to talk to her. Right? Things new, everything's exciting. Then life happens. See, we follow those passions. We follow those passions. Just like a, like a little puppy. Where's it going? Where's, it, where's she going? I don't know. I'm just excited to be here. I just, I'm so excited. Right? Follow those passions. And she becomes important to us because we're following our passions. No, 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 no. Husbands, let me, let me set you up for success. Okay? Your wife is not important to you because you're passionate about her. You're passionate about her because she's important to you. See, then what happens? Life happens, right? Bills come. Kids come. Oh. They change everything. That passion, that newness, those feelings start, they start to, they, you know, they're not as strong. And then suddenly you're, and because you're chasing those feelings, we have marriages that end after 10, 15, 20 years. Why? Because we fell out of love. No, you fall into a pile of leaves. You don't fall out of love. Love is a choice. Love is a choice, and you choose that every day. And when that person that God has placed in your life, if you place importance on them, I am going to place importance on this person, then the passions follow. Let me give you another example. 
Why are diamonds so important? It's a rock dug up in the dirt. You know how many things I've dug up in the dirt that ain't worth nothing? Ew, put that right back. Why is it, why are they worth, why are they so valuable? Because we say that they're valuable. We place high importance on diamonds and thus they're valuable. Right? The things that you want to be valuable in your life, you need to determine. You need to set those priorities and you need to revisit those priorities. When I set my priorities, it sets my path and it also determines my passions. Let me talk about... I'm going to... Now I'm not going to go there. Okay. I got a whole little soapbox section, but I'm not going to... Nope. Yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. <laughs> Over the last few, few years, I, and I get it. Listen, I, love, I know we all love options. We all love options in life, you know. I mean, like I talk to my kids about what it was like actually watching live TV. And, you know, my older ones get it, but my younger ones are like, what, what? What is this strange thing you talk of? You mean I can't watch Blue's Clues anytime I want on demand? I have to wait for it to, for what, air? What is this? What is airing? <laughs> you know, everybody loves priorities. But we've taken that and we've applied that to our commitment to church and we've applied that to our relationship with God and we have what I call today as buffet Christians. Which is, I'm going to go there on Sunday. That's my Sunday church. I'm going to choose that on Sunday because I like the music and, it, and I like the lights and it's cool and I can get in and out in an hour and I can be, you know, invisible. I can get my stuff and then go. But then I'm going to choose this church B as my Wednesday church because they have the discipleship classes that I need for my kids when church A doesn't offer those things. So I'm going to go there I'm gonna, and then this is going to be my C church. My C church is they've got a, you know, Bible study that I like and and yeah, you know what that guarantees? That guarantees you spend your life feeding but not growing. That's what that guarantees. Not every church is perfect. Not every church is perfect. Crossroads is not, is not perfect. But you know what? We need to jump in with both feet. Need to jump in with both feet. Yep. You know? If the lights and the music is important to you, then go to Church A and sell out to whatever discipleship that Church A is, is offering. If classes for your kids and discipleship for your kids is important to you, guess what? Go to Church B and sell out to that. Do you all with me? Because what you have, you have a generation of Christians that are dabbling. I'm going to pick this from there, pick this from there, but I'm not going to give back to anything. Yep. I'm just going to take, going to take, going to take. Yep. You got to set our priorities, guys. We have to set our priorities. Second thing, alignment requires discipline. Now, this is where it gets tough. Now, when we get into chapter 4 verses 23. Y'all still with me today? This is where it gets tough. I'm glad you're with me because it gets tough here. Verse 23 says this, instead let the spirit renew your thoughts and attitudes, put on your new nature, created to be like God, truly righteous and holy. Ephesians 26, you jump to 26 to 32, it says, and don't sin by letting anger control you. Don't let the sun go down while you're still angry, for anger gives a foothold to the devil. If you're a thief, quit stealing. That's just good, solid advice right there, right? Who says the Bible's hard to understand? Come on. If you're stealing, stop it. Instead, use your hands for good work, and then give generously to others in need. Don't use foul or abusive language. Mm, 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 mm. 
Let everything you say be good and helpful. Mm, mm, mm. That just sticks between the teeth right there, doesn't it? So that your words will be an encouragement to those who hear them. Oh man, oh man, oh man. That's enough to just, that, that's a whole sermon series right there. Because we're, as Christians, we're good. At, it's like, okay, don't say foul language. Got it. Check. But let everything you say be good and helpful. Ooh. Mm, don't like that. Verse 30, and do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Oh, do not bring sorrow. Oh, come on. That's a fear I have in my life. I don't know about you, but just the thought that I could be bringing sorrow to the beautiful and wonderful Holy Spirit of God by the way that I live my life. Do not bring sorrow to God's Holy Spirit by the way you live. Remember, he has identified you as his own, guaranteeing that you will be saved on the day of redemption. Get rid of all bitterness, rage, anger, harsh words, and slander, as well as all types of evil behavior. Instead, be kind to each other, tenderhearted, forgiving one another, just as God, through Christ, has forgiven you. The second thing, alignment requires discipline. Jim Collins, in his book, From Good to Great, says, Greatness is not a function of circumstance. Greatness, as it turns out, is largely a matter of conscious choice and discipline. Conscious choice and discipline. You see, once we set our priorities in life, once we set our non-negotiables in our family, in our marriage, now comes the hard part. Now we have to actually enact the discipline to make them priorities. See, priorities are not priorities as long as you want to do them. Priorities are not priorities until it gets tough. Priorities are not priorities until you prioritize them. Because discipline and discipleship is found in the details. So we make big statements and grand gestures, but true discipleship and discipline is found in everyday actions. God, I give you my life. You can have everything. You can have all of me. Really? Because God's having a hard time getting your Sunday mornings. Really? God, you can have everything. And he said, well, how about 10%? Let's start there. Ooh, 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 ooh. Hey, hey, hey. My toes, my toes is getting bruised. God, I give you everything my whole life. He said, really? Can I get five minutes out of your day to read my word? Pray to me. Ooh. God, I give you everything. Really? Can I get you to be quiet and stop gossiping? Please? God, I will give you everything. I, I need you to stop grieving my Holy Spirit by the way you live your life. Stop grieving the Holy Spirit by the way you talk to that woman that you work with. Uh-oh. He said, I'm just trying to get you to stop grieving the Holy Spirit by the way you text somebody who's not your husband. See, it's where it gets tough, see? It gets difficult. Why? Because it requires discipline. Discipline. And that's something we don't like nowadays. Right? Oh, sure, we like to watch other people live lives of discipline. Our athletes, you know, oh, yeah, that's great. But what about us? What about the discipline that, that, that God is calling out of and for us? Oh, I love my family. I love my family. My family is everything. Really? Because you leave them every chance you get. You go on weekend trips here, weekend things there. You walk into your den and turn on the ball game and shut your kids out. Listen, fathers, let me, if you don't do this, let me encourage you with this. Every guy has a hobby. Everything is something they like to do. Include your kid in that hobby. Amen. You know, don't just watch the game. Talk them through the game, right? And it's not about, it's not about creating a lifelong, you know, lover of OU, which I'm gonna, not going to lie, yesterday felt good. Things felt like they're back normal in the universe again. OU won, OSU lost. 
Just felt, felt things were, you know, you know. You know, a couple weeks ago, Venables was like, you know what? We're going to set the bar as low as we can go. And this week, Gundy was like, yeah, well, I just hold my gum. You know, <laughs> if you set the bar low, I'm going to wiggle underneath it. I'm just kidding. Sorry. Oh, it's you. Go Pokes. <laughs> but it's not about creating a lifelong sport. It's about creating moments with your, with your, with your child. Right? Listen. Let me, let, me, let me help everybody with something real quick. The 80-20 rule. You, some of you might have heard me about this. In life, 80% of what you talk about with most of the people is going to be, you know, just normal everyday stuff. It's going to be, how's your day? It's going to be, you know, what, you know what's, what's going on with the weather? What's, you know, what's wrong with the government? It's going to be all, you know, the, the, the surface things that you, we tend to talk about. But you got to wait through the 80% to get to the 20%, which is the real deep stuff. And if, if you're not, if you don't wade through the, 20, the 80%, you're not going to get to the 20%. That's how it is with your kids. You know, you're going to talk to them about class and you're going to get those wonderful one-word answers. How is class today? Good. What'd you do? Nothing. <laughs> and a little more. I need you a little, a little more engagement. A little more engagement. You know, you got to wade through that. But then suddenly someone's going to take you deep to that 20%. And the problem is us in the church, we don't want to wade through the 80%. We want to jump to the 20%. You know, you, you first meet somebody, you know, how you doing? I'm doing great. How you doing? I want to talk to you about your relationship with Jesus Christ. And they're like, whoa, whoa, I'm just ready to talk about OU. You know, but you got to wade through that 80% to get to the 20%. That way you're, you're, you're ready. And that's how it is with your kids. We got to be willing to build relational bridges that support the weight of the gospel. That's what it is. That's what it's like, you know, it just you're walking with somebody. Paul says, follow me as I follow Christ. And, and you make a friend and you take them with you. But you've got to set those priorities. You've got to be intentional because if you're not, you'll find yourself spending a lifetime of talking about the 80% and missing the opportunities when God is calling you to go deeper with somebody else. Are you all following me? You've got to be ready. Because you have to, it, it comes in discipline. Alignment requires everyone. You cannot be in unity unless everybody is in unity. <laughs> right? Sounds simple. But Ephesians 4.16 says, He makes the whole body fit together perfectly as each part does its own special work. It helps the other parts grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. Ephesians 3.6 says, and this is God's plan. Both Gentiles and Jews who believe the good news share equally in the riches inherited by God's children. Both are part of the same body and both enjoy the promise and blessing because they belong to Christ Jesus. Ephesians 4, 11 and 12 says, Now these are the gifts Christ gave the church, the apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors, the teachers. Their responsibility is to equip God's people to do his work and build up the church, the body of Christ. It takes all of us. Everybody say it takes all of us. Sounds simple, but it's true. We need to operate in unity. See, when you and I operate in unity, we need to understand we all don't have to be in full agreement in order to operate in unity. There are going to be things we're going to disagree about, right? I could bring up one topic today, and we've got however many hundreds of people in here, we're going to have that many opinions about that topic. But when we operate in unity, you and I, we each give up a little something in order to gain something greater. We give up a little bit in order to, to get ourselves in alignment with what the Spirit of God is doing, what the truth of the Word of God is teaching us. This is why it is our desire, it is one of our pillars, of our core um, pillars of DNA to be a diverse church. Culturally, ethnically, generationally, generationally. I mean, let's, let's talk about today. I love the fact that we opened up the service with it might get loud. This new kind of raucous worship song. We're singing, it might get loud, and there's people in here going, no, no, it's not, no, not, not for me anyway. No, nope. it's not my cup of joe. That's okay. But then we play Love Lifted Me. Right? And some of y'all are like, yeah, it does. 
That's okay. That's what we want. We want to, a church that all generations are seen. All generations are, are, are ministered to. It's not just, we're not, we're not ignoring one generation just so we can focus on another generation. And there's some tension there. When you, it's easy when everybody looks like you, thinks like you, and talks like you, right? That's what we have. We have churches that are building large groups and they're amassing people who look like us, think like us, talk like us. But that's not what God calls for. Oh, amen. And there's tension there. As you bring people in from different cultural and ethnic backgrounds, there's tension there. Why? Because they're bringing their cultural practices with them. And I'm bringing my cultural practices with me. And there might be some tension there, but it's okay. It's okay. Why? I'm okay with that tension because God calls us to be unified together. Amen. I want to prepare you as we move into 2023. We're going to be doing some things. We're going to be making some changes. Why? Because we want to start reaching out. We want to broaden our base generationally, culturally, ethnically. We're going to be doing some things. Why? Because we want our services to look as much like heaven as possible. So we're going to be doing some things to reach to the older generation and to the younger generation. So worship is going to look a little different. It may sound a little different. But the thing that we've been really trying to drive home over the last few years is, you know what? The sound is not the most important thing. It's the heart of worship that's the important thing. Amen? Amen? Unity, oh, this is so good. This is, unity has collaborators, not captives. When we operate in unity, we collaborate together because most of us view alignment and unity as they need to get with what I'm doing. Right? They need to get unified with what I'm doing. They need to agree with me. I don't know, maybe you need to agree with them. Maybe we need to collaborate because when we do that, when we hold that viewpoint, then we have captors in our life. I'm holding you captive to my will, to what I want to do. When we are in unity, every perspective is cherished. Every perspective may not be agreed upon, but it is cherished. So as I conclude... And as a worship band makes their way to the stage, um, we need to set priorities in our life, in our family. What are your priorities? We need to focus on discipline. Discipline. There is no unity. There is no alignment without discipline. What are you doing today? to increase the discipline in your life? What are you doing to make the small decisions that have exponential results in your life? And we need to operate in unity, cherishing others' perspectives, giving up a little bit, creating collaborators in our life instead of just going around expecting everybody to bend to our will. You see, unity makes us greater than the sum of our parts. Unity brings exponential increase. As we, uh, as we conclude, I, I can't help, when I think about being greater than the sum of our parts, I can't help but think of the 1980 U.S. hockey team. Right? The miracle on ice. They go up against the the Soviet Union team, which had 20 plus years of, of dominant hockey playing on the world stage. I think out of, if I remember correctly, out of like 200 and something games, they lost eight over a span of 20 years, right? I mean, completely dominant. And you got a bunch of college kids who never really played together going up against them. But those college players worked in unity and their team became far greater than what they looked like on paper. 
they became greater than the sum of their parts. I'll give you another example. A young shepherd boy, a teenager, five foot nothing, weighed a hundred and nothing pounds. Said he was ruddy and handsome. Goes up against a war-hardened soldier with years of military training, combat experience, who was lethal. But the difference between this big, massive specimen of, of lethality and this small shepherd boy was the shepherd boy was in alignment and unity with the Spirit of God. And David says this. He says, you come with me with sword and shield, but I come with you in the name of the God of Israel. You're unified with the weapons that you use, but I'm more unified with the weapons that I'm using, which is the spear in the presence of God. That should encourage somebody today. Because no matter what your giant looks like, no matter how trained they are, no matter how deadly, no matter how lethal they are, if you operate in unity with what the Spirit of God is doing and called you to do, nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. I, that should get somebody excited. It should rouse somebody up this morning. If you would, would you stand to your feet this morning? Where's your life out of alignment? Where's your life lacking unity? Is it in your home? Is it in your thought life? Is it in the daily disciplines that need to be walked out and fleshed out in your life? Is it in your priorities? What are you prioritizing? What's important to you in your life? For some of you, you need to get your priorities straightened and set those priorities. Is it in operating in unity? Are you sowing discord where you go? Are you gossiping? Where are you out of alignment? Because if you pay attention, allow the Holy Spirit to speak into your life, you will sense the wobble, the shake, the knock in your own life. With every head bowed, every eye closed, maybe like we asked and talked about last week, what's out of alignment is you. Meaning you're living life for yourself. You're doing it your own way. You're trying to drive your, your own car, your own life down the road, and God is stopping you right now and saying, give me the driver's seat. You need to commit your life to Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior of your life. You need to cross that line of faith and prioritize Him. If that's you, with every head bowed, every eye closed, I want you just to be brave enough and courageous enough to lift up a hand so I can pray with you this morning. Is there anybody in this room that you'd say, yeah, I want to commit my life or recommit my life to Jesus Christ? We had several raise their hands last week. Is there any this week? I don't want to make, I don't want to let this opportunity pass. Just know that if you're here today, today's the opportunity for you. You can call out to him. You can cry out to him to be the Lord and Savior of life. And the word of God says that he hears you and he will come running towards you and he will give you new life and make you a new creation. So let me ask this question. Where's your life out of alignment? Where's your life out of unity? It's going to take sacrifice. It's going to take some blood, sweat, and tears. Fixing your marriage may take some blood, sweat, and tears. Don't run out. Don't run away from your marriage. Because, because God wants to restore that marriage. Maybe it's a relationship with your children, a relationship with a family member. Don't run out on it. Don't give up. Don't quit. It's going to take some sweat. It's going to take some discipline. It's going to take different priorities, but it's worth it. Don't quit on those dreams that God has given you. Life has thrown you some curveballs. Life has thrown you and taken you a different direction. But don't give up on the dreams that God has placed in your heart. It's going to take some discipline, different priorities, but it's worth it. Where are you out of alignment? Worship band is going to come and play. Now is our time to respond to the word of God. Now is our time to take what was spoken through his word and to apply it and to personalize it and to make it our own. So I want to encourage you to find a place. We have altars here. We have altars in the back. If you can't make it down here, we have altars in the back for you. 
We've got altars here. We have elders who want to pray with you. The worship band is going to come. They're going to lead us in a time of response. I encourage you, don't just walk out. Don't just leave. We're going to dismiss in a few minutes. But now is your time to drive this home. Now is your time to respond. Would you come find a place to pray? Would you lift your hands? Would you worship with us? Let's respond to the Word of God together. Worship band, would you sing?
during my message today, I, I just felt the impression of the Holy Spirit just to, to spend a little extra time, time away from my notes to talk about the necessity and the need of us being filled with the Holy Spirit and reliant upon the work of the Holy Spirit in our lives. So before we dismiss, I, I think it would be remiss if we did not create an opportunity for everybody to receive what the Holy Spirit has for each and every one of us in our lives. So if you would be willing with me, if, if you desire more of the Holy Spirit and, and more of His power and presence and operation in your life, um, I'm going to ask everybody, let's, let's close our eyes once again. It's just a personal moment. Would you, and if that's you, would you just kind of lift your hands with a palm up um, gesture, a posture, signifying open hands, an open life. And I'm going to pray right now that the Holy Spirit would just fill you with His presence and His power today because we need Him. Amen? We need His presence in our lives. We need Him in operation in our lives. So right now, I pray by the, the power of the Holy Spirit that each life, each marriage, each person with hands outstretched and raised up, raised up in a gesture, a posture of openness and, and accepting would be filled right now by the sound of my voice. Just begin to pour yourself, Holy Spirit, into their lives. Lord, fill each person up. If they are in need of more grace, Lord, fill them with grace. If they are in need of more power, more boldness, fill them with power and boldness. If they are in need of wisdom, lead them to truth and fill them with wisdom. If they are in need of compassion and love, fill them with compassion and love. If they're in need of peace, Lord, just I pray the peace that passes all understanding would just flow to their lives right now and fill them up and change them, Lord. Change us from the inside out. We need you. We can't make it through another day. We can't make it through another week without you, Lord. Our world is hurting. It's going crazy. And we need more of you. Oh, God, we lift up our hands and just pray. Holy Spirit, fill us up. Fill us up with everything you have for us. We receive it today. We receive it. We receive it. We receive it. Yes, God. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. You have won the victory. Oh, we praise you. We praise you. We praise you. Hallelujah. You've won the victory. Hallelujah, you've won it all for me. Death could not hold you. Come on, let's, make, let's rejoice in that. Let's give God just a big round of applause today. He's good. His spirit is good in our lives. He's won the victory. 
You may not know it, you may not see it just yet, but he's won the victory. He's won it. He's not winning it, he's not gonna win it. It's past tense, baby, he's won it. The clock has struck zero, the confetti's going because he's won the victory already. There's no doubt, no doubt he's won the victory and you and I get to walk in that victory. We get to walk in the confetti. We get to walk in the parade. We get to walk in the joy. Why? Because he's won the victory. All the work's been done. You and I just get to walk in the blessing, the fullness that the Spirit brings us. So today as we dismiss, I'm just going to say the altars are, are open. Our elders are here. But as we're dismissed today, walk in the victory that God has won for you. Walk in that victory. Walk in boldness and confidence. Why? Because he's the king of kings. He's the Lord of lords. And he's got your back. Amen. Let me pray over you. Heavenly Father, thank you for every person in this room today. Every person that was, that's been watching us online. Lord, I thank you for every home that's represented. Every marriage, every relationship, every job, every dream, every career that is represented. And Lord, I pray that we would walk in the victory that you've won for us, that we would walk in alignment, we would walk in unity with your word, and we would lean into what your spirit is leading us to do. And as we do this, I pray that you would open up the windows of heaven and pour out a blessing upon each and every person. Give grace, give anointing, give power, give peace, and give joy, and give fullness. We pray that each of us would walk in the fullness of God. We thank you for these things in Jesus' name. And everybody said, amen. amen, amen. God bless you. Go in grace, go in boldness. Remember, we have our fall festival tonight starting at 5 p.m. We would love you to come and bring somebody with you. God bless you. Have a wonderful day.